how many times have you been killed on TV? Oh, mate. Well, I I started not. I didn't start a, a lot of times. Shot and killed yeah. on Australian TV and and shows around the world a, a lot of times. It started early. <laughs> I didn't start by getting shot, but I started by being a malevolent presence on a country practice. A kid that may have been up to no good and that may put a, a, a young woman in danger. I then went a little later on on a country practice. They removed my testicles uh, and sent oh, them to <laughs> Burrigan for testing. I got thrown out of Summer Bay by Alf again for sort of intimidating a young girl down on the beach. I got called a, a flaming mongrel by, by, Alf, by Alf. Which I take as... Uh, high, high point. Oh, mate, yeah. every, every Australian yeah. wants, Who wants would to want do to that. that. Yeah. Absolutely. So then I started graduating. Um, I got thrown out of East Street by the Reverend Bob. Um, again, for intimidating. I think I bashed an old man uh, on that occasion. And I thought Reverend Bob, being a Christian, should have been kinder to my character. But no, he got rid of me and yeah. the audience clapped. Uh, <laughs> I think then I went on to McLeod's Daughters and got trampled by both women and horses. Again, for being a bit of an asshole towards women. Uh, on Water Rats, I just got shot dead. Uh, and what after, had you done wrong this time? Pardon me? What had you done wrong this time? Oh, I tried to kill and shoot and maim everyone. I was chasing Colin Friel's character all about the place. I played a great <laughs> character called Kiwi Dave. Anyway, they shot me dead, and when I died, no one mourned me. They stood over my body and said he needed shooting. I was invited on to All Saints where I played a bank robber where I crashed myself in a car and then had to have open heart surgery saved by Dr. Luke Falano on the side of the road. They invited me back to All Saints where they smashed my head open uh, because I was, again, some sort of violent side, side person at a pub. They invited me on to Blue Healers where I blew myself up. Um, <laughs> look, the judge had made a bad call. I was upset with it. And so to make my point, I uh, strapped my body with explosives and, 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 and held the court hostage uh, on Raw against the late great Heath Ledger I was trying to kill him but they got me first uh, I got shot through the heart with an arrow uh, on that one so I'm no stranger Gary uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, here, been, here I am thinking uh, a little bit naive you'll, ma- you've seen the world absolutely when I played Kerry Packer on the second season I died but then came back to life uh, <laughs> Packer Wacker yeah that's right with yeah. the Packer Wackers it was the only uh, that was the only resurrection story I faced <laughs> uh, generally I get shot and killed uh, oh, and, and these days if Australia needs a racist um, uh, a racist either murderer or just a nasty racist person I'm the go-to guy um, Rob uh, you're, you're disappointing me <laughs> <laughs> mate I've got one of those faces that people the audiences love to hate if, if they if, if sex symbol the Have you sorry a sex symbol mate a sex symbol I, love I, mate I got invited on to underbelly and yeah. they didn't ask me to take my shirt off now <laughs> if, if you're like I if you're going to get asked to get nude on anything, it's underbelly. But they said, Rob, our audience won't be able to handle that, man. You're going to have to st- keep your clothes on. In fact, here, have a jacket too. <laughs> this, this is unfair. I remember when you were on the set, I remember getting a phone call from you yep. one night on on the set of uh, Underbelly. Yep. And I think you were down filming down the Harry Cafe de Wills or whatever, okay. down, down that way. Yep, yep. And you asked me, I'm a crop cop. I'm on the set. I just need some uh, need some uh, yeah thoughts on what I don't know why you phoned me too. We'll cla- yeah, yeah, clarify yeah, yeah, that. That's right. That's right. This is before any charges of... or allegations were made. I know, against me. but I said at the beginning of this chat that see I could it. see things coming. Right, cracks in the armor. Oh, it's when I discovered that you were a heinous criminal, capable of such horrible things as recording all of those phone calls. <laughs> I thought to myself, "Yep, that's the Gary I know." Yeah, and I haven't learnt. Here I am in the studio <laughs> with <we> <laughs> cameras and recorders everywhere. <laughs> But uh, the the question you had, and mm. this is uh, this is what I like about the creative types, the artists that you are, that you look, or, or the one that you are in particular, the the subtlety of what's going on, because yeah. basically the scene required you to go in, as was the old ways in policing, seventies, eighties, or whatever. Yeah. Go, oh, here's a free coffee, here's a yeah. free meal, or, yeah. or whatever. What do, Jubes, what do you do? Do I get my handcuffs out or do I, I show my police badge or point to my gun or whatever? Yeah. How do I ask for a free meal at a cafe? Yeah. What would the go be? Mm. And I always, uh, what I saw was the older school that would go get the free meals or whatever. Mm. They'd go in and the owner would be saying, um, what do you want? 
Oh, just the usual, or we'll leave it up to you. That was almost like a subtle, mm. subtle code. You're not mm. saying, here, we're in the cops, we want a free meal. Mm. It was almost like, oh, whatever you want to give us. And uh, I don't know, that was a way of so- softening it. But you were looking for that type of detail in the character. Absolutely. So the human being has the most extraordinary capacity to see what's going on, right? We are social animals. Mm that require an understanding of the way we do things around here in order to stay alive. And there are so many different ways and practices and types. There's in-groups and out-groups. So evolutionarily speaking, if you don't know the way to behave around here, you're going to be an outcast super quick, right? Or if you don't know what those guys over there are doing, then you're going to be their slave, very quickly Mm. because they're going to be doing things that they're going to try and keep you out of. And so unless you've got your eyes and ears open, there's so many things going on around you all the time that can trip you up, that can leave you behind. But if you're awake to it, then you can either avoid the danger or if you're that sort of person, you can profit off the situation. Now, my interest as an actor always is to get a sense of what's going on and how is it done in the most subtle of fashions. And this is the beauty of making TV and film, is that you can get a close-up of a tiny little thing that most people wouldn't see in the daily world, but because you have the power of editing, you can get a close-up of that subtle thing where the officer may just slightly shift the jacket back to reveal just the butt of the, just the tiniest yeah. tip of the gun. Just a tiny it's little simple. thing. Those, those, those dialogue things that you just said, just the usual, leave it up to you. Yeah. Leave it up to you. Doesn't that sound like the most generous of offers? <laughs> and, Does, and the most sinister uh, undertow. Uh, yeah, when you put it that way and in that tone, it, yeah. it sort of, well, I can't. I said leave it up to them. Mate, you know, nothing sinister yeah, going on here. I just offered an opportunity for him to... But you, you, were, you were playing a real live cop in that. It was yeah, going, but that wasn't uh, the first phone call I made to you about that character. No, uh, but and, and you were talking about, and this is what uh, you got what the character was. Mm. Like I, I didn't know him. I knew of him. I knew his type, the one yep. that gets caught up in. That's uh, right. Corruption. Neville Scully Scullion was the yeah. character. Yeah, and it's. Really. You, you, I, I think our discussions were, do you think he was leading it or do you think, and I, I said, I, I thought he was just weak. I, I thought it was a weak human being mm. that was sort of following in mm. the pack. And as you said, human beings wanting to be belong. Yeah. And, uh, he well, he was a great point. fun character to play. And again, he wasn't a lead character, yeah. um, but he was a really, really important part of that story because he was a man that could have been a great detective Mm. or a corrupt detective, depending on the cultural leadership inside that environment. Yeah. And to me, that represents the vast bulk of the human experience. We can all be good and we can all be bad, depending on the culture in which we find ourselves. There's not that many people that will swim against the tide. And so I really, really enjoyed playing Scullion because, look, in the end, we know from the historical record that he was a bit corrupt, mm. but he wasn't a leader of it. He was just in those moments trying to serve the masters around him. So the reason I loved playing that was what are the sorts of things that a guy like that, he could be good, he could be kind, yeah. he did have compassion, but he also let the public down. He took money, he did these things. And so I'm always really interested in those tiny little uh, interpersonal moments where that person could make the choice to go either way, but they don't. Mm. And that's, I think, what's really interesting for a viewer because then they're not sitting there. If, if the guy's clearly corrupt and a bit of an ass, then there's no jeopardy there. There's nothing interesting because you know what they're going to do in any given moment. Yeah. But if they could go either way, that's when it becomes compelling. And I believe we live our lives like that. We truly believe as we go along that we're making decisions. I could be this or I could be that. And that's why we tell our stories. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was an interesting take, and and to me again, it showed that you do get you understand that that's not a world that you're you operated in. No, but you understood the subtleties of it, and that. Well, those, I understand those... that coercive pressure. Yeah, that wanting to be liked by those around you, and I think that speaks to everybody, no matter what walk of uh, life you're from, whether you're from the criminal class, whether you're from the working class, the upper class, the intelligentsia, the literati, the creatives. There is a sense of. Am I going to be liked by saying this or not liked? Yeah. Liked by doing, not liked. Am I going to get ahead mm. by doing by serving myself, by being a bit sneaky? 
you know. And so there's all those things I, I love when it comes to playing these complex characters. 